One of the most debated elements of Agile is shipping fast. It is the need for speed and agility. And honestly, it shouldn't be debated because Agile came to light offering solutions for the speed of delivery, among other things. In contrast to some of the uh, project and work management practices of the late 1990s. And if you were in my Agile Accelerator Masterclass last year, you know that among many other things, Agile is about shipping fast. So in this video, we will shed some light into why this resistance for speed when we talk about agility, five ways in which you can help really as an agile coach, and also why not, what are some of the questions that you can help people start asking as far as the speed of their current delivery of results, outcomes, whatever you wanna call it. So if you're curious enough, let's get started. First, let's understand what speed is. There should be no confusion about that. What is speed? Speed is the ability to get to yes faster. So if whatever you produce is, for example, marketing campaigns, you want to get to your clients loving what you're doing with the marketing campaigns faster. If what you create is software, you wanna be able to deliver software sooner rather than later. If you create processes, uh, rules and regulations, you want to be able to generate and come up with drafts faster. It is okay to want speed. Your customer wants whatever it is that you do faster anyway. I mean, you want your email to arrive within seconds, right? After you send it. I, I should hope so. You're in instant messaging. You probably love Amazon fast shipping or maybe even same day delivery. None of that implies though that you have to forego quality or that you have to burn out the people in the production process. In fact, speed is not an agile thing. You can do that even in more traditional forms of work and project management. You could gain speed by adding people to a project, for example, with moderate to modest degrees of success. You could also degree the scope and still honor certain dates that you might have. One of the key things to understand is that speed is a product of capabilities. Let's pick runners, for example. If you wanna become a better runner, right now you could just double the speed of your running by running twice as fast and then pass out completely tired. That's not very nice, you, you won't go very far this way. But you could also slowly and gradually tweak your capabilities. You could eat differently, you could have a different style of training, you could work on your technique, your biomechanics, you could run for longer times. While there is a limit to how fast each and every person can run, averages do exist. So you have an idea of what a fast person running could look like. But even if, let's say, if you can't make anywhere close to that, you can, whatever your pace today, work on it and become a little bit better at it. The same is true for your work and your product delivery. You can look at the averages and the possibilities that already exist in the market and compare yourself to them. Or in any case, you can look at yourself, your processes and investigate what capabilities are not working properly. And if you're finding the conversation about speed a little bit challenging in your workplace, I'm gonna talk to you about five things that you can do as an agile coach to help move the needle with your teams as far as this aspect of agility, which is shipping fast. The first of five reasons why your team is not shipping fast is because they lack the technical skills. That is actually not uncommon, but it's a little bit surprising because today, no matter your technology, you could be in the world of software development, deploying, integrating the code to production, delivering it to the hands of the customer on their phone, on the web, no matter where, every hour, if you so wish. The technology is out there allowing you to do so, and Usually, your team might be lacking the skills to do so, or maybe they know how to do it, but they lack access to the infrastructure, or it could be a combination of both. 
So that one is pretty straightforward as a coach. You're going to create that awareness and you're going to advocate for your team having access to those things. And the more aware the team is, the more they will join forces as well in asking for those resources. The second reason is that you probably have red tape. So sometimes the amount of socialization needed, especially in bigger organizations, is kind of big and it slows things down, but it doesn't really have to be this way. I remember working in a financial institution and we actually had a lot of approvals that were needed from the development side, from the production support side, and from the executive level every time some code was reaching production. Now, we couldn't go away with removing those level of approvals, they were all necessary. But what we could do, and that's what we used to do, is that in one hour or less, everybody gets together in a call, look at the changes and approve it right away. So this one usually has to do with fostering that element of self-organization and really operating as a team. And that's a prime spot for you as a coach. In another example, there was this team and they were working rather sequentially, handing over work. There was analysis review, development review, architecture review. And all of these people really did to did need to input uh, their ideas and, and combine that to make a perfect solution for the user stories they were implementing. But they didn't need to do that sequentially. So what we really worked on was in really understanding what could then be done. And today they basically have this one workshop and it's the user story kickoff workshop and all people come together, share their insights, and then they are they all leave the room ready to work on whatever they need to work on already fully aligned. Reason number three, nobody's focused on the customer. Seriously, ask the customer, what is their speed, their preferred speed? Most customers, and you're talking about people who have services with the government, with highly regulated institutions, we all want things fast, yet either developers or analysts or people in the industry sometimes find reason to say why things can't move any faster. But that is not to our customer advantage in happiness and satisfaction. And that is a key piece in asking keeping value in customer satisfaction at a high rate. In this one, I find that sometimes we might have been culturally chained to the status quo and the ways that we do things. And usually it can also mean because we give a lot of importance to volume. So delivering a lot of things at once instead of one or two things, but frequently. So your staff, your team, the developers, they're usually burning out because they are working a lot, yet nothing is really being delivered. So what is a, a good thing here to do is kind of using some sort of uh, creative destruction, my favorite favorite type of interventions. And I think a good thing could be operating in sustainable development and at the same time having fast delivery. Start working on those things. The fourth reason why speed might be an issue for you, it's because you didn't optimize for your value stream or your chain of value or whatever you call it. And this is a more strategic one and sometimes even a little bit cultural. What I mean by that is that you must understand how value is added from beginning to end, the end being your customer, your end user. So first, everything that you do is focusing on making sure that that value can cross the stream unimpeded. That means exactly what you're hearing, impediments removed. That's the, the number two thing to do here. So how many times have you been sitting on those meetings, reviews and whatnot, where people said, I have this problem, I can't work in this thing, that tool is not working. And then there's silence in the room, when in fact, we should all be rallying up and thinking, okay, what needs to be done? What do you need? How do we make sure that it's going to be working by such and such date? So that is a key piece in there. Uh, a third piece that's very important is that if you do understand your value stream, you should also be understanding what is a constraint in your stream, in your system. And that is as simple as to understand, is there a machine that needs to operate at full capacity? Is there a person that is the sole person that can be responsible for approving something? So when it's machinery, you can always work on improving technicalities of it. But when it's a person, here's what you can think about. You can, for example, one, make sure that that person is never operating at max capacity because you know then that person is about to burst. And then while you have that person helping you, let's say a 70% of their capacity, you don't let everybody else just keep producing more work like crazy because that 
first person is the constraint in your system. So you can't do much more than what that person can absorb. But what you can do is not just let those people sit idle, but you can think about who else can I form? Can I prepare and upskill so that the first person who was my constraint now is no longer a constraint. And I have an army of people who can do what that first person can do. And with that, you're eliminating bottlenecks, of course, and then be prepared because that constraint that you just remove will make some constraint pop out somewhere in the system. And that's the beauty of understanding your value stream. And the fifth reason is because a lot of people are concerned about what has always been versus what it could be. And that one is clearly more related to culture and mindset. And of course, not very easy, but it needs to be worked on. And that usually has nothing to do with one single person, but with the system around everybody. If you think about it, it's going to manifest itself by, have you ever wondered before that you would be buying things over the internet? No, there wasn't even an internet. And then have you ever wondered that you're gonna be receiving things with fast shipping, fast delivery, 24 hour delivery, now same day delivery? Have you thought about having your favorite movies being streamed into your computer no matter where you are in the world? Now, even your TV is a computer. So all these things are about what has been dreamed of. There was something that was possible. There was something that wasn't just yet and people went after it. And speed is part of that equation and everything you get to see that the world just became faster. So the same thing, the same principle applies what is that about the speed that really keeps people thinking that they can't push forward, that they can't be a little bit better? And in that one, sometimes you have much more emotional and historical reasons as opposed to, let's say, something very concrete. So the work is a little bit different, but you can bring people to have those discussions. And that's actually what's going to lead us to the next section, which is... Let's talk about what kind of questions would you then be asking to help people cross that bridge about what was possible and what could be possible as far as shipping fast. The first question about shipping fast that I like to ask is, let's go unconstrained. How fast do you want to be? It's really, there are no absolutes in here. There is no comparison. Just shoot for a number. That's the something that you wish for. How fast is that? Then, only then, we critique. Only then, we bring questions about, well, how did you reach that number? Why not more than that? Why not less than that? What is the, the reasoning behind that? What makes that speed the ideal speed, the good speed, the one that makes you go for it? Then the next two questions are, the, how fast are you today? And what is the gap in between what is it that you wish for and where you are at today? And it's a little bit of creative destruction in here, not any attempt to being realistic. There's really no such thing in a certain way, but it really is about the landing zone. So let's say, you want to deliver great software every single day. And today you have a hard time delivering every quarter. So, wow, it's a little bit of a distance. Would you be happy delivering every quarter first? Maybe not. Would you be happy delivering every month? Would you be delivering every week and that will make you happy? So you start playing on those scenarios. Then an important one is, well, what prevents you from being fast today? Start thinking about what is around you, the people, the processes, everything that impedes or that propels you forward. Then you're gonna have questions about the, uh, the possibility, the how. What can be easily changed to accommodate the speed that we are going for? What can maybe not be easily changed, but if we do change, will knock out 50% of the problems that prevent us from being fast today? And you can start even going a little bit more at the core of things and ask, how do you define speed? What is speed for you? I had my own definition. I said in the beginning is getting to yes faster. Let's have the discussion as a team, as a department, as a whole organization. Before we set a number, how do we understand speed? A little bit more philosophically, but also in the what of things. Fast in what? faster in getting prototypes, faster in the whole chain. So you're gonna have fantastic discussions when you start bringing in questions that just make people think instead of having that prompt answer to give them. That's it, that's the video, my friend. I hope you found it useful and informative. You know, as an agile coach, those are the moments in which we can really help is in helping people get past their preconceived notions, understanding what agile really is and helping them see beyond what they deemed possible. That's where the magic really happens. Let me know in the comments, what is it that this video 
brought up to you. If anything, or if there's something that you would like me to maybe detail a little bit more, it would be my pleasure. As of right now, this video ends here and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.